Hello everyone, this is Harry Gill and in this video we are going to look into primitive streams. So far, the stream class we have been looking into is a generic stream class. So that stream can be used to store integer, double, string or any other custom object that you want to store in it. However, we have more stream classes and these other stream classes are primarily used to store the primitive types. There are three different primitive stream classes we have. We have int stream, which is used to store primitive int, sort, byte, or character. And then the second type is long stream. So this stream is used to store a long primitive type. And we have a double stream. This stream is used to store a double or floating type of numbers. A very obvious question that might come into your mind is that if we have a stream class and we can store integer, long, and double in that generic stream class, then why do we even need to have a specific stream class for int, long, and doubles? So there are few use cases that cannot be handled by the generic stream class. We will look into an example uh, shortly. And also, these three stream classes have a specialized methods. And we will discuss all those methods as well in this video. So let's first jump onto the IntelliJ and see what kind of use case cannot be covered by a generic stream. I'm going to create a generic stream of the type integer. And this stream will produce numbers from 1 to 5, which are, of course, of the type integers. Now let's say if I want to get an average of these numbers. So how would I do that using the generic stream class? So for that, first of all, I'm going to calculate the sum of the integers. Now let's print the sum here. And to calculate the average, I will also need to count the number of integers that are present in the stream. So I'm going to create another variable called count. And I'm going to now use the count terminal operation on the stream to see how many integers do I have in my stream. And finally, I'm going to print the average, which will be sum divided by the count. And now I'm going to run this program. And in the output window, we print sum is equal to 15. And after that, we throw an exception back. And the exception says stream has already been operated upon or closed. The reason for this exception is due to the code that we have written on line number 14 here. Since reduce is a terminal operation, and we have already discussed that, as soon as a stream sees a terminal operation, it is going to close that stream. And once a stream is closed, we cannot call any of the methods, nor terminal operation, nor intermediate operation, since it is closed. And that's why the count terminal operation fails, stating that the integer stream that we have here is already consumed. Now, as you've seen in this example, we are not able to calculate an average of integers using a generic stream. However, calculating average is a very normal use case that you will have to do at some point of the time. There are other solutions that from the stream, you can create a list. And then from the list, you can manipulate the elements of the list and do whatever with it. However, that is not a stream solution. We do need to change the data structure of our stream. So for these kind of common use cases, which can be done on the primitive types, and that is the reason we have primitive streams. Let me comment out the code and show you how do we calculate average using the primitive stream. And to start with, I'm going to use the int stream. As you notice here, creation of the int stream is done using the off method, which is very similar to how we do it for a generic stream. Once you have an int stream, all you need to do is call an average method. So this is a utility method present on the primitive streams. So this method will return the average of all the numbers that are produced by the int stream. The average method will return an optional double. Note that it's not returning optional that we have already discussed, but it returns an optional double. I will create a dedicated video on the primitive optional, but for now, just think of an optional double as very same as optional, just that 
the optional double can only store double values. And just like optional, the optional double also has a if present method. And we'll call that if the value is present in it, we will print the value. I'm now going to run the program. And as you notice, we have printed the average of 1 and 2, which is 1.5. And this time, we did not see stream already consumed error. The example we have seen is for the int stream. So I'm going to write another example. Now we will be calculating the average of a long stream. Similarly, I will create another example. And now we are calculating the average of the doubles. And now I'm going to run the program. And as expected, we get three outputs. And these three output corresponds to three different averages that we have calculated. Now let's head back into the slides. So we have seen an example of average. And average is present on int, long, and double stream. And it returns optional double, as we have already discussed. And here is the same example that we have seen in the IntelliJ. So now I'm going to discuss all such utility methods that are present on the primitive streams. So I'm not going to jump into IntelliJ to write each and every because they are pretty straightforward and simple programs. But I'll show you the example here on the slides. And I will also check in the code that you will see here so that you can play around with it later on. The next method on the primitive streams we will look into is called boxed. This method converts a primitive stream into a generic stream of that type. For example, calling boxed on an int stream will create a stream of the type integer. The long stream will create a stream of the type long and double stream will create a generic stream of the type double. So this method can be used to convert a primitive stream into a generic stream. And here is the example. So I'm creating a int stream with the integers 1 and 2. And I'm calling boxed on that int stream. So the return of the boxed will be a stream of the type integers. And now I can use this integer stream as any other generic stream. Similarly, calling boxed on a long stream will give us stream of long and calling boxed on a double stream will give us a generic stream of the type double. The next two methods is min and max. As the name suggests, calling a min method on a primitive stream will give you the minimum of the number in that stream. Maximum will give you maximum number in that stream. Calling min and max on an int stream will give you optional of int. And the reason it gives optional of int is because the stream can actually be empty. In that case, it will just return an empty optional int. And calling these methods on a long stream will give you optional long. And calling these methods on a double stream will give you optional double. As I have mentioned before, I'll create another video to discuss optional int, optional long, and optional doubles. But for now, think of them as just like normal optional just storing the primitive value in it. And here is an example. So we can call min on an int stream. If the value is present in the optional int, I'm going to go ahead and print it. Similarly, for long and double stream. So all these three statements will return the value 1, because 1 is the minimum number of those three streams. Similarly, in the second section, I have the exact same streams. Now I'm calling max. And in these three statements, the return value will be 2, because 2 is the largest of the numbers in all those three streams. You might remember that we had a min and max even on the generic stream. Now you might ask, why do we need a min and max on the primitive stream when we have it already on the generic stream? And the reason is, the min and max on the generic stream takes a comparator as input. So we have to tell min and max how to compare the values and decide which one is minimum and maximum among the other elements in the stream. But for the primitive stream, we don't have to give any comparator. It doesn't take any input because it knows that int stream will always have ints, long stream will always have long, and the double stream cannot have anything apart from double numbers. The next method is sum. 
as the name suggests sum is going to just add up all the numbers in the stream the int stream will return an primitive int the long stream will return a primitive long result a double stream will return a primitive double result and notice that they are not optional they are simple normal primitive types and here is an example we are calling the sum method on int stream long stream and double stream and we are simply printing it out and the result will be as you would expect it will just add two numbers and print it the next method we will discuss is range range is a static method that's first thing to remember secondly range takes two inputs for an int stream it will take two integers and range will return a stream in between a and b where a is inclusive but b is not inclusive and for the long stream range will take two long numbers and again it will return a stream from a to b where a is inclusive but b is not inclusive due to the functioning of the range we cannot call range on a double stream and the reason is because we cannot get all the floating numbers in between say from 0 to 0.5 because there will be infinite numbers in between those so getting a range of a double stream is not a valid use case so we don't have this method on a double stream here is the example in the very first one we are saying int stream dot range 1 and 3 this method will return a int stream of 1 and 2 and what we are doing is we are essentially calling the for each on that stream that's returned and simply printing all the elements and similarly we are doing same on the long stream we get the first one and two from the int stream and we get second one and two from the long stream and the main point to note is three is not included in the stream the next method is range closed the functioning of range closed is exactly same as range the only difference is in here b is also included in the stream that is created now in this example i'm calling the range closed instead of range and i'm giving the exact same parameters for int stream and long and as you see in the output we get an int stream of one two three and we get a long stream of one two three so three is also included the next and final method that you need to know is summary statistics this method called on an int stream will return int summary statistics if called on long stream we will get long summary statistics and if called on double stream we will get double summary statistics and the return of this method is easier to actually show you a running program rather than explaining so here is the example so in the very first line we are calling a summary statistics on the int stream and then we are simply printing it and the corresponding output of that line is here so int summary statistics contains the count sum min average and max so in here we only called one method and it gives us the whole summary of the stream so there can be use cases where you would need more than one stats of a stream and since if you let's say get an average and then you want to get a min it won't work because the stream has been consumed so instead you would call the summary stats method and it will return you all the summary and then once you get the object you can simply get whatever stats you want and the same stats is returned for long and also for a double stream that is all i wanted to discuss in this video as mentioned before i will check in the code and i will mention the link in the description below if you have liked the video hit the like button please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you get notified for my upcoming videos until next time bye bye